everyone, Anthony here from MTG Alpha, and today we're going to do a deck tech video on Osier, Axonal, Deepest Might. Before we take a look at the newest legendary from the new Ixalan set, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to Legions of Will. So Legions of Will is a TCG that I had made years ago. I've been working on it for years. And um, this here are some of the theme decks from the second 255 card set, Forgotten Tribes. So each deck uh, contains 40 cards and three borderless base cards. The game is focused around having three bases and you want to destroy all three of your opponent's bases to win. Um, so within your bases, you could attach permanents. Permanents would be uh, upgrades, units, and traps. Um, here is a secret rare alternate art version of what a base looks like. This is one of two legendary bases revealed so far. Your bases produce resources to play cards and have a capacity limit and a defense. That is how much damage it needs to be dealt in a single turn to destroy that base. On the back is an activation cost. You start with one base face up in the standard format. Um, otherwise, there's a skirmish format where you start with all three of your bases face up. Um, and then you can pay the activation cost to flip your bases over. But if all three bases are face down, then that player would lose the game. Um, here are some of the units. This is an Anitarian unit, another secret rare alternate art card with like a textured foil design to it. The card quality is amazing. And I have a third set coming out in the month of October called Journey into the Abyss, and it is a mini set. Um, so you can go on legionsofwill.com. You can buy these decks right now and this playmat in the background, which is a, it's really thick. Um, so this is the Twilight Blossom playmat. So if you check out the website and want to grab some of these decks here uh, you could use code alpha 50 um, for 50 percent off anything on legionsofwill.com and i'll even throw in some extra goodies for checking it out and here is an upgrade the vault and here is a regular hollow legendary angel and it's called legions of will because our units here have a will cost and a power the will is how much Will, um, you have to roll a d12 and that's what it would cost to attack with that unit and it acts as a balancing mechanic for units that are strong they might have a low will units that are weak might have a, um, a high will but then certain units can have a low will um, but with an, another like balance or, or something like that so yeah so legionsofwill.com check it out code mtg or sorry code alpha 50 and uh, so I know you came from the channel and um, yeah, I'll hook it up. All right, so here is my deck tech on Osier Axonal Deepest Might. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but this is, um, the card was revealed for the newest Ixalan set coming out. Uh, so not exactly sure how you say it, but I wanted to um, do a little deck tech video on this. I got really inspired by it. It is uh, a god, a mono red god creature that when you deal a source, when a source of yours, a red source, deals non-combat damage to a, an opponent, it deals, if it's less than Osier's power, then it'll deal damage equal to Osier's power uh, instead. So um, the wording's a little weird and, and I did not help by trying to explain it any better um, or reciting it from memory. Um, but basically Osier has four power. So a lightning bolt typically deals three damage to an opponent and it would deal four instead. So the idea is that anything that's dealing non-combat damage is going to deal four and we have ways to um, double our commander's power and then we could double the damage as well. So after just some quick brainstorming, I decided the best way to build this deck would be with our creatures that tap to deal one damage to each opponent. Because when we tap them with our commander out, it'll actually deal four damage to each opponent. And if we have multiples, then that's going to stack. Um, so if we tap multiple creatures, obviously it's going to be four and four and four to each opponent in a single turn. Then um, 
we have ways to double or pump up our commander. So then if our commander, we can get up to eight, now we tap for eight. And then if we have damage doublers and triplers out, then that damage will double. So we could tap our creature and deal 16 for each one to each opponent as well, to each opponent for each creature that we end up tapping. So that's the main idea in the deck. Um, there are cards like Impact Tremors in here. So if you want to do some sort of like infinite combo with like infinite ETB effects from um, like, uh, what is it? Um, the, uh, oh, it's, it's totally grinning. What is it? Grinning, I guess maybe. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to do some like infinite ETB effects, then you could also win that way. Um, I don't believe there's any combos in this deck, but I, the deck list is on Moxfield. I built, um, the deck list out once the card was revealed and already the deck list has gotten hundreds of views. Um, I didn't even realize that the deck list was made public, but um, I was playing it on Moxfield. There's a very nice mana curve in the deck. It's mono red. And uh, so there's a lot of fun things you could do with treasure tokens and things like that. Um, you have access to dealing direct damage to creatures for removal. You have artifact removals. And um, with your creatures and creature tokens, you can set up a decent enough um, defense line. And then with your damage doublers, everything hurts. So this deck is built with creatures that tap and deal one to each opponent. And there's it's also centered around devil tokens. So there's a couple cards that I'm missing that would work really well in here that is part of the deck list um, that I just don't have on hand right now. So this deck itself would be just a few cards short. Um, the most important being the Zerzoff card that um, produces devil tokens whenever an opponent draws their second card, or is it is it the first card not on their turn? Um, but the devil tokens are great because they're little one ones that can be pumped up with other effects that we have. Their damage is doubled and tripled by other enchantments in the deck, like gratuitous violence, things like that, fiery emancipation. Um, but then when they pop, we can keep them as a good defender, and then your opponent's going to be weary to attack because you can throw a devil in front of them, and then now that um, devil is going to be instead of dealing one damage to any target, which includes creatures if needed. Um, but it could be 8 or 16 damage to any target and preferably our opponent. So our opponent attacks, we block with the double and we're going to deal 16 to their face. Um, so from playtesting the deck on Moxfield, again, link in the description. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys checking out this video, checking out the deck list. Um, so if you want to like, like, comment on the deck list, um, like, share the video. Um, yeah, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, this deck is absolutely so much fun. Um, I had a Torbrand deck, turned that into a Fire Song deck, and now I'm sort of split between as as my mono red quote mono red deck um, as part of like my commander decks. I'm torn between now um, this deck versus Fire Song because this deck is a lot of fun. Um, it has the potential to deal uh, about. 70 like 60 or 70 damage to each of your opponents by turn six or seven so this deck can be sped up just a little bit more um if there if you have any suggestions definitely let me know in the comments below what you would take out and what you would add if you want to bring this closer to a cedh uh turn three turn four sort of win what would you add to make that possible um yeah but so let's check it out so we're going to start off with our planeswalkers here so I had mentioned the double tokens. So we have Tabalt, of course. Tabalt's also great because our opponents can't gain life. So that's gonna be very important in this. Um, even if this deck goes up against Aloro, I'm very confident that it'll still win uh, as with Aloro being on the, the table. At least the Aloro deck that I have built, which is now a Bilbo deck. But um, this deck would would go would easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. So that's that's actually saying something. Um, you can minus two to create a one one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. So as we mentioned, um, we're pretty much averaging, uh, we're minimum four with our commander out, but we can very easily do eight to 16 damage instead. We have Zariel, Archduke of, and I don't know. <laughs> um, but all of the abilities here are great. It only costs four to drop. 
You get plus one to give creatures you control plus one plus oh and haste until end of turn. That's going to be relevant for our creatures that we tap to deal damage. It's also going to be relevant to um, getting our commander um, higher power. So then now our creatures will tap for five. Um, we can pay zero, which is great to create a 1-1 double token that, that's going to pop and deal 8 to 16 damage or whatever it is. And then the emblem is not bad either. You get an emblem at the end of the first combat phase on your turn. Untap target creature you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Um, so the combat phases don't necessarily matter. We do have some cards that will synergize well with that. For, but for the most part, if we can untap just one creature and just deal another 16 damage to each opponent that could very well be enough to win the game um, if we hit that ultimate but the first two abilities are great as is so of course dockside extortionist is going to be great because it'll create treasure tokens when it enters um, it'll create x treasure tokens where x is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control so that'll be great we do have um you know that'll be nice that like when later on in the game we want to just dump a bunch of mana into something we have a few options and we'll go over that soon so for the creatures lightning rig crew taps and deals one damage to each opponent and whenever you cast a pirate spell you could untap it uh dockside extortionist is a pirate I'm not sure how how many other pirates are in here but that second ability is not completely wasted so i found myself forgetting about these second abilities because i never do pay attention to it but Pay attention, pay attention to those because there are definitely cards in the deck that'll help you untap and then therefore allowing you to tap again and that can seriously speed up the game um, by like a turn or two. So most of these are gonna tap and deal one damage to each opponent, which is gonna be four with our commander, which is gonna be eight with damage doublers, or if we pump up our commander, it's going to increase and that's gonna be the main synergy in this entire deck. So we have Blister Spit Gremlin, only cost one to drop, so it's a great turn one. Um, you do have to pay one to tap to deal one damage to each opponent. However, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you get to untap it. So enchantments uh, make up a lot of the cards, card types in this deck, more so than instants and sorceries. So for a mono red deck, surprisingly, this has very little instants and sorceries. We're rocking uh, 20 plus creatures and a huge uh, handful of enchantments. I wanna say there's about 20 enchantments in the deck. So although you do have to pay one to tap it, uh, and I've never really had issues with mana in playing mono red, if anything, I kind of um, underestimate the amount of lands I need. Um, so I'm always playing around with somewhere, you know, around like 30 lands. This deck has 34 lands, so I feel like that's a good s spot to be in. But Mono Red is um, pretty, it's pretty typical to um, be short of lands, but then also flooded. So finding that sweet spot's really important, which treasure tokens do help. So I don't mind paying the one to tap it. I like the fact that we can do it multiple times because whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to untap it and it only costs one to drop. So that's why that's in there. Goblin Fire Slinger costs one. It only deals one damage to target player, but it only costs one to drop. So it's really not bad to give us a head start and deal with like whoever's the immediate threat. Um, we're gonna step away from those types of cards for a second just to show off Magus of the Moon. Non-basic lands are mountains. There's 30 mountains, basic lands in this deck and then four non-basics. So this is obviously gonna slow down our opponents, uh, most likely. Um, Spear Spewer, only cost one. It has Defender, but that's fine. It, it's a zero two, it taps and deals one damage to each player, including us. So it's gonna deal one to us, but it's gonna deal like eight, 16, 32, whatever to our opponents. Firebrand Archer, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. So that's pretty crazy. Um, we have Fire Slinger, Tap, deal one damage to target creature or player and one damage to you. So this is nice because this is like, we have this like little bit of removal on here where you can tap and deal four or five or eight direct to a creature. And uh, we only take one damage, but we could also deal it direct to a player and it only costs two to play, which is pretty fair for that effect. Thermal Alchemist, tap, deal one damage to each opponent, only costs two. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, untap it. Cunning Spark Mage costs three and has haste, so we can play it, um, use its effect as soon as we play it. 
Cunning Spark Mage deals one damage to target creature or player with haste. Really, really fantastic card. Brimstone Trebuchet, cost three, defender and reach. So that's that's definitely relevant because flying is, is a real pain in the ass to deal with. Um, so tap deals one damage to each opponent and whenever a knight enters the battlefield under your control, untap it. I'm actually not sure if any knights in this deck, but do pay attention to that. Uh, we have Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh. Whenever you cast a red spell, untap Chandra. Chandra taps and deals one damage to target player. If Chandra has dealt three or more damage this turn, exile her, then return her to the battlefield transformed under um, her owner's control. So um, tap, deal one. That can be four, that can be five, that can be eight, that can be 16. Um, and if it is only one, so we get it out early and we don't have any of those other effects or our commander out, tap, deal one. We play a red spell, untap, tap, deal one. As long as we can deal a minimum of three damage with her, then it'll enter transformed as Chandra Roaring Flame, which you can plus one to deal two damage to target player. That's nice that you can tap, deal a lot of damage, enter transformed, and then deal more damage just by ticking up one. And that could again be plus one, deal 16. We can minus two to deal two damage to target creature. And uh, we can minus seven, deal six damage to each opponent. Each player dealt damage this way gets an emblem at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals three damage to you. So I do believe that the damage has to come from a red source, non-combat damage from a red source we control. So bear in mind that sometimes the effects aren't going to work with the main synergy in our deck. And also, um, I believe it has to target an opponent um, obviously I don't have the card in front of me, but, um, but we do have damage doublers in here. So like Fiery Man Emancipation, Tor Brand, Soul Fem. So when you are dealing damage to a creature versus a player, just keep in mind the differences, um, with your synergies. Cinder Pyromancer costs three. It taps and deals one damage to target player. However, it has a, whenever you cast a red spell, you may untap Cinder Pyromancer, similar to Chandra. Um, so really good card. And then, nope. Well, we still have some more creatures, but might as well. Um, Earthquake, we have this in here because um, it is an X spell, deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. So this can be a game winner towards the end or it could, you know, be relevant in any case. Um, so, and it gives us something to dump all of our mana into when we have it. Um, so we have Nettle Drone, has no color. So whenever you cast a colorless spell, untap Nettle Drone, and it taps and deals one damage to each opponent. So we do have a decent amount of artifacts in here, so keep that in mind. Hell Rider goes with our Devil Synergy. Um, it is a Devil. It costs four. It's a 3-3 with haste. And whenever a creature you control attacks, Hell Rider deals one damage to the player or Planeswalker it's attacking. Um, so we can attack with our double tokens. We're not really attacking with the creatures that um, tap and deal damage, but we can as well. And we can attack with our commander and it has haste. And so its effect will work with um, itself. Spitfire Lagak, Lagak. It costs four, it's a three, four, has a landfall ability. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. That is excellent. And there's not um, a lot of things that synergize with you know the multiple landfall triggers but even having that just trigger once during your turn is going to be pretty powerful magus of the wheel um cost three pay two tap it sack it each player discards their hand and draws seven cards obviously fantastic in a mono red deck because we're gonna run through our hand really quickly and we want to keep everything going so we definitely want to draw more cards this is a perfect way to draw seven cards while having zero in hand Torbrand, if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, including the creatures they control, it deals that much damage plus two instead. Solfum, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. You can pay one and two Phyraxian, so either two red or two uh, life for each pip. So one, one red for each pip or one um, or two life for each pip. Um, discard two cards, put an indestructible counter on Sulfum Mayhem Dominus. And it's a 5 4. It's a fantastic card. Terror of the Peaks costs 5. It's a 5 4. Spells your, it has flying. Spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks costs an additional 3 life to cast. 
Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Now, most of our creatures have one power, zero power, um, two power, so it's really averaging about like one or two power. But with our commander out, it's going to make it a four plus every time. So there's some relevancy there. Ancient Copper Dragon. Flying whenever it deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20, you create a number of treasure tokens equal to the result. Obviously that's great, and we could dump all of that, um, but we could basically hoard those treasure tokens and then dump it in an earthquake later on and win that way. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck, Mana Clash, and I love cards like this that um, are just very cheap, cost nothing, not really good in a lot of decks, but you and Tari, so for only one, for one, sorcery speed, you and target opponent each flip a coin. Mana Clash deals one damage to any player whose coin comes up tails. You repeat this process until both players' coins come up heads at the same time. So both players are gonna flip a coin at the same time. And then for each time you do that, whenever it comes up tails, that player is gonna be dealt one damage. Now, we're only ever going to really be dealt one damage. Our opponents are going to be dealt that 4, 5, 8, 16, 32 damage every single time. Even 5 damage for 1, we're paying 1 to deal 5 damage. Um, could be 0 times, but it could be 3 times. And you repeat this process until both players' coin comes up heads at the same time. So you both have to with heads it's, it's really it's really just a lot of fun it's a great card in this deck mana clash and uh it costs nothing so um i love it jessica's will three sorcery choose one if you control your commander as you cast this spell you may choose both you can add one red for each card and target opponent's hand which is obviously great if you want to get this out early um and you could also exile the top three cards of your library you may play them this turn Burn Down the House works with our Devil Tokens, cost five, sorcery speed. There's a couple other cards similar to this. Choose one. I like this though, even though it's the cost the most um, in terms of uh, CMC. It can deal five damage to each creature and each Planeswalker, which is great. And you also have the option to create three 1-1 one, one Red Devil Tokens. Uh, when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target and they gain haste until end of turn. So really fantastic strategy. I, I, this deck is so much fun. The Devil Tokens and the Tap Deal Damage, a lot of fun. Excuse me, so Infuriate is one of the few cards in here, one of the few um, like instant sorceries in here. It costs one at instant speed, target creature gets plus three, plus two until end of turn. So we target our commander, and then now our commander has seven power, so every time we're gonna deal non-combat damage to an opponent, it's going to deal seven every single time until the end of the turn. Uh, so Lightning Bolt is one instant speed deal three, obviously the target creature or player, but now that's gonna be deal five, et cetera. And, um, but it depends on what your target is. And keep in mind Torbrand and other doublers like that. So that could work as creature removal. Spike Field Hazard, it can enter tapped as a, as a land that produces red or at instant speed, it can deal one damage to any target. And if it's a permanent dealt damage and it dies this turn, you exile it instead. Unleash Fury is a great, great, great card in this deck. Double the power of target creature until end of turn at instant speed for two. So now this is how we very easily can infuriate. And then now it's seven doubled, it's 14. And then so everything is tapping and dealing 14 to each opponent. But then we have Torbran or like Fire Emancipation out. So now we're dealing like 30, 42 damage every time we tap a creature. So Unleash the Fury can put in a lot of work, which is great. Uh, Rush of Blood does a very similar thing um, for three at instant speed. Target creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is its power. And there's very few cards like these cards. And uh, they work really, really, really well in this deck. So for artifacts, yeah, we have Commander's Plate, cost one, equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, which works with our synergies and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. So every, it'll have protection from all colors except for red. And you can pay three to equip your commander with it. Otherwise you can pay five to equip it to something else um, if needed. Onaginata costs one, 
is an artifact equipment, can be attached only to a creature with power three or greater, and it only costs two to equip. Equip creature gets plus three, plus out, and has trample. Um, if you're gonna attack, we're obviously targeting our commander. Plus three is gonna bring it up to seven, tap, deal seven to each opponent. And it has a pretty low equip cost for its ability. Um, the downside being that it can only be attached to a creature with power three or greater, but it's obviously geared for our commander here. And it'll also give our commander trample, which can be relevant. So really good card. Soul Ring, of course, Arcane Signet, Fire Diamond, Ruby Medallion, Hazardous Monument, cost three, red creature spells you cast, cost one less to cast. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. So that'll be great to just, you know, early on in the game, especially, we have something that we're not, you know, willing, that we don't need within the next few turns and we're looking for something better. This can help us out. Heraldic Banner, cost three, artifact, enters, choose a color, red. Creatures you control of the chosen color, red, get plus one plus O, oh, and it taps to add one mana of the chosen color. Um, any of these little effects are pumping up our commander, which deals more damage. Wine of Blood and Iron, cost three, and then you can pay four any number of times in a single turn. Target creature gets plus X, plus O until end of turn where X is its power, so double target creature's power for four. Sacrifice Wine and Blood, Wine of Blood and Iron at end of turn. So another thing that we could dump our um, extra mana into, it only costs three to play, we could let it sit there, we could pay four, you know, or if we can afford it, we can do this multiple times, double, 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 and then actually win the game. So this is another really, really powerful card. I love its versatility. And another budget card that is probably overlooked in most decks, but in this deck, it just works out perfectly. Gauntlet of Power costs five, enters, choose a color red, creatures of the chosen color get plus one, plus one. Whenever a basic land is tapped for mana of the chosen color, its controller adds an additional one mana of that color. Obviously, this is going to affect all red creatures on the battlefield and all um, basic lands that tap to produce um, red, but it's going to be great in our deck. Now, for our enchantments. This card is excellent. I love this card. Some of my top picks in the deck, um, as you know, would be the Lion of Blood and Iron, the Unleashed Fury. Uh, Fire Whip is definitely one of the other top picks in here. It costs two. Uh, enchant creature you control. We're gonna, most of the time, I, I tend to play this on our commander. Enchanted creature has tap. This creature deals one damage to target creature or player. And you could sacrifice it and have it deal one damage to target creature or player. So we can now have our commander benefit from its own ability, tap it and deal four uh, plus to direct to a player. Um, or we could deal four to creature doubled plus two plus three, all that sort of thing. And then we could also sacrifice it to just, you know, if that's all we need for no cost whatsoever, we just basically send this to the graveyard and win the game potentially. We sacrifice Fire Whip and have it deal one damage, which would actually be four plus to target a creature or player. So love that card in here. And there's another card that's very similar that I really like as well. Impact Tremors is another enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, the each opponent thing is, is definitely important. Um, yeah, works with our doubles and works with everything else we're playing. You can also go infinite uh, if you want to do infinite ETB triggers and try to win the game that way. There's a part of that in there. Inferno Fist costs two enchant creature you control. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus O, oh, and you can pay a red and sacrifice it to have it deal two damage to target creature or player. So it's very similar to Fire Whip, except it doesn't allow us to tap but it does give our commander plus two plus O oh, and itself, we could just pay one to sack it, send it to the graveyard and get that um, ability that Fire Whip has that I love so much. Power of Fire is another enchantment and there are very few cards that do this effect that grant the enchanted creature the ability to tap and deal one damage to target creature or player. Um, and Power of Fire is one of them. And these cards, there's very few of them to choose from. Um, if there are others, definitely let me know in the comments below. Um, I tried finding the cards that do this exact effect. Um, and they're very budget. This is a very budget friendly deck. I have obviously cards like Dockside Extortionist and Ancient Copper Dragon and 
the ruby medallion which also went down in price but i also have like showcase variants and foil and special treatments of certain cards however with all of that this deck is only around 300 dollars. so you can definitely cut a few cards and cut some treatments in within the cards to get this deck lower but you know being mono red it's usually pretty budget anyways but it's just the best cards in this deck the ones i would not cut are the cheapest cards so i love it power of fire we have roiling vortex at the beginning of each player's upkeep it deals one damage to them whenever a player casts a spell if no mana was spent to cast that spell it deals five damage to that player and you can pay a red your opponents can't gain life this turn all those abilities are super relevant and synergize well with everything else arcane teachings is definitely my top pick number one pick in this deck because it pay three enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has the ability to tap and deal one damage to target creature or player so if you have no creatures out but you have the ability to play your commander from the command zone obviously you can um equip enchant it with this and then now our commander has six power and it works it's it, this makes our commander so much better if this ability was on the card just right off the bat it, it would be insane it would be a very very versatile card that that works with itself and synergizes with itself very well so this is like the missing piece for it that's the way i look at it it uh it'll give it the ability to tap itself and deal six damage to uh target player so pretty good pretty good blood moon non-basic lands or mountains fervor creatures you control have haste we want to go as fast as possible so the haste stuff is very important and with that we also have rise of the day it also gives legendary creatures you control plus one plus oh you see the synergies with pumping up our commander there Sulfuric Vortex, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, it deals two damage to that player. If a player would gain life, that player gains no life instead for three. So, you already know. Burning Earth costs four. Whenever a player taps a non-basic land for mana, it deals one damage to that player. And we also have, uh, we'll get to it, but that that is going to be deadly. Furnace of Wrath uh, costs four. If a source would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals double that damage to that creature or player instead. That, that counts for all creatures and players, including yourself, um, but it, it's really not that big of a deal. Kyra Negotiations costs four. Tap an untapped creature you control. This deals one damage to target player. This gives all of our creatures, our devils, our um, terror of the peaks our commander it gives all of them the ability to tap and deal one damage to target player it's crazy 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 i almost considered taking this out but then i was like wait why would i do that this is like a like an enchantment this is like power of fire for everything it literally just gives everything power of fire ability for four so super fun mana barbs whenever a player taps at any land for mana it deals one damage to that player and again we know how easily we can have our um commander get up to seven or 14 or or 12 or eight or 16 so anytime a player taps a land for mana you're gonna take 16 damage it's that's like you you just win the game for having this out and having your your commander be pumped up to like seven and you have one damage doubler out or something um and i've play tested the deck on moxfield just running hypothetical scenarios i'm sure you're all familiar with that um but uh just I've played probably 15 or 20 hypothetical games and it's this card is just so insane so consistent dictate of the twin gods flash for five if a source would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead again this is all sources it's it's uh, furnace of wrath but for one it has flash gratuitous violence cost five two and three red if a creature you control would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead so now we're um, isolating its effect to creatures we control still doubling fire emancipation cost three and three red if a source any source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals triple that damage instead city on fire is the same um, effect it deals triple that damage and it cost eight though which is two more than fiery emancipation but it does have convoke so we can help reduce its color um colorless cost to cast it 
And yeah, for the lands, we have our non-basics, Castle Ambreth um, enters tapped unless you control a mountain. It taps to add one red. You can pay three to tap and creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn, which is very relevant. That extra one helps, especially if we're doubling or tripling it or dealing damage from multiple sources multiple times in a single turn. So that's why that's in there. We have Forgotten Cave. In case we get flooded, we can cycle it for a red and draw a card and discard it. And then we have our, uh, oh, actually, no, we have a couple more now, basics. I was like, where are, where are those? Spine Rock, no. Hide away when it enters the battlefield. Look at the top four cards of your library. Exile one face down, put the rest in the bottom in any order. So this allows us to kind of like, you know, dig a little deeper in our deck. And then it can tap and add a red, or you can pay a red, tap it, and you can play the exiled card without paying its cost if the opponent was dealt seven or more damage this turn very easy to pull off and then war room taps for colorless pay three tap it pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity which is one so pay three um tap it pay one life and then draw a card and then we have our 30 um basic lands here we have some basic snow lands just kind of cuz and then um we just have our typical basic lands, our typical mountains. So there's um, just a few cards missing in this deck. The full deck list is in the link in the description. You can check it out, check out the mana curve, give it a play test, like the deck list, uh, comment. Um, and yeah, if you like the video, like, share, subscribe, greatly appreciate it. We're almost at 800 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of doing this as like a creative outlet and um, just uh, I, I just like building decks. So. I really appreciate you guys checking this out and um, let me know what cards you would add, take out. Um, yeah, that's it. Until next time. Peace.